This winter, I'm making an effort to use hand tools a lot more. Uh, and the tool of tools when it comes to hand tools is the hand play. We interrupt this program to annoy you and make things generally irritating. <laughs> All right, say hello to Rusty here. A lot of work this is going to need. And everything you see on the table that I'm going to show you here in a second is everything that I'm going to use to make Rusty the best Rusty he can be. Uh, just to kind of let you know, it's one of the planes that my dad had that I, I think he kind of stopped using because um, he had all those really cool power tools. Uh, but um, these are the ones that I'm trying to uh, rehab so I could use them and hopefully pass them down later on. Uh, use whatever sharpening system that you use. You don't have to do everything the way that I do, but it tends to work for me. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart. Why you take it apart, you're going to check and see if there's um, any major defects to the blade or the chip breaker, um, like uh, any dents in the front, any pieces missing. When you take out the frog, you're going to make sure that the uh, bottom of it is flat so it sits right. Uh, you're also going to make sure that the adjustment knob works and then take down any markings that you see because you'll be able to use that to type it later on. Same thing for the bed. Look for any markings on it. Check and see how bad the rust is. This one's probably got more pitting than I thought. The first step is to clean off all the big stuff. Get all the dust, the dirt, the surface rust. And you can do that with the toothbrush like I am. Not my toothbrush, it's my wife's. And then you're also going to use a Scotch-Brite pad. Or you could start with steel wool if you want. Just to get the surface rust that's on top of the real rust. And then we're going to do the same thing with the blade. Once again, take your time with it. The more time you put into it now, the better it's going to be later. Now, next thing we're going to do is put it all in any kind of bucket that you have, and we're going to fill it all the way up with vinegar. It took me about a gallon. Now, I know vinegar is only a mild acid, and some people say you shouldn't use it. However, I've had good luck with it, but you got to follow the steps exactly. Next, you're going to put salt in, stir it together. I use about it's supposed to be one cup of salt for every gallon of vinegar. So I put half a cup in, stir it around, put the other half a cup in. And uh, I do it by eyesight. So I could be a little short, a little high. but And then I'm going to mix it all together again. The salt actually makes the vinegar more acidic. Thus, it eats it off faster. Next thing you do is you're going to cover it up and get it out the way. Now, while I let that soak, which you could do for hours up to days, depending on how much time you need, so I'm going to start on the tote and handle. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off different strips of different grit sandpaper into different sizes so I can start the task of sanding, especially all those hard to reach places. One of the things I would recommend is taking the time to clamp down your vise, uh, the movement did make it a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. Now, how much time you spend doing this completely depends on what the tote and the handle look like before you started, how much of a finish you want to put on it, how detailed you want to get, and honestly, whether or not it's for your own personal use or if you want to resell. And there is a, there is a market for finding these old planes, refurbishing them, even if you already have one, and reselling them. Am I, I can't be the only one who does that. Uh, paste wax is my favorite thing to finish with for hand tools. I like the way it feels in my hand. It's easy to apply, easy to reapply. It looks great. And it's something that I'm using one of the finishes dad still had that I, this is his rag and I'm using it on his tool. So there's just something about that that I like. So this part is all about elbow grease. As I take my steel wool, and I start cleaning these off with a little bit of time, probably about an hour and a half to two hours. You will see the water get more and or the vinegar, the liquid get more and more red. Now, here in a second, you're going to see just how easy the rust comes off. You could have done this with a commercial store bought degreaser, de-ruster or whatever. But at least I know this is 100% natural and I got it at the dollar store. So it cost me two bucks. And um I could have put probably a second plane in there if I wanted to. Now, you'll see the bed here. One side's pitted. Can't have helped that. The other side's really clean. 
This is me three to four days later. I don't even know what day it is anymore. So uh, let me go back a little bit. Um, the most popular video I have right now is my dollar store video. Uh, and not the second one. That one bombed. The first one. And in that first one, one of the things I mentioned, as I mentioned in this video, is that you can get vinegar and salt. And you could do that to bust the rust off of your hand planes. I got a lot of comments saying that uh, that's wrong. That if you do it that way, it's just going to cause more rust. Or that some people use vinegar to make rust on some of their... I don't know why they would want to make rust, but that's what they said. So the whole point of this video was the next step, which apparently I did not record. Or actually, I got a video of me setting up the camera and then leaving. <laughs> um, so the next step is really important, and I'll show you what I did get. And that is you need to make sure that once you have scrubbed it and you're clean and you're happy with the rust removal that you wipe everything down, you take that bucket, you empty it out completely, and then you fill it up with fresh water. I know, hold on a second. And then in that water, you put in baking soda. When I was a kid, I think you Gen Xers will remember this, there was this monster game. Uh, it, it, it basically gave you these skeleton bones. And then inside the skeleton bones, you could put this Play-Doh stuff. Did anyone remember this? And then when you put it into the little monster factory, I think it was called, you they gave you vinegar in a vial. And then they gave you baking soda in a packet. You put it in there. It fuzzed up. And then all the Play-Doh melted. And then boom, you had... Um, just the skeletons. Uh, back then when I didn't know anything, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. That's what happens. The baking soda, and you want to use a cup for every gallon of vinegar, and you stir it around, as you see here. What that does is that allows, uh, it, 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 it deactivates the vinegar, and then boom, you're set. The oxidation process is done, uh, or whatever process, that you are good to go. As long as you do general maintenance, you will never have an issue again. And now for something completely different. Now, my favorite way to uh, clean up the body and to ensure squareness is simple. MDF, so I know it's a flat reference face, some Gorilla Glue, and sandpaper. You can, I have three of these at three different grits, and I just clean up the sides, check it with an engineering square, and make sure it's good to go. The more I do it, the shiner it'll be. Now, there are many different ways to sharpen. Here's how I do it. I always use a jig. It, I just find it easier. And then I have this board where I have already mapped out where 25% is and 30% is. Then I'm going to start off with rough sandpaper because this thing was way out of whack. It took me 45 minutes to get it to where that shiny line went all the way across. Now that I have reestablished the primary 25 degree edge i am going to sharpen it we start off by flattening the back use the steel rule you don't need to sharpen all the back just one solid point all the way across on the back this did take a little bit of time because there was some distortion now we're going to reference to my jig again so we can set up the guide to 30 degrees for the micro bevel. I'm also going to use my scary sharp system. Um, I have four different grits that I'm going to go through. I do each grit 12 to 15 times. In between each grit, I make sure, one, that there is a smooth line all the way across the top of the edge so I don't want all the way through. And two, you do not want to cross-contaminate the grits on this 3M paper. All right, we are rust-free, we are clean, we are square, we are sharp. Let's put it back together, and let's go to the workbench. I'm going to get some maple and see how it sounds. Sounds good. The shavings need a little bit of work, but I'm sure that's because of my technique, but that's another video.